Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial where this time we are going to be talking about plaid. That's right, we are going to take this scene where we have previously textured, uh, we've created the glass, the wine or grape juice, whatever you like, and also the grapes. And I wanted to focus this on the tablecloth. I wanted to make it look like it's a picnic and to do that, in my opinion, it should be a plaid tablecloth. In this video tutorial, we are gonna be going over a couple of things, including the mix shader. We're gonna be using the hyper shade so that we can make connections and so much more. So let's go ahead and get started. You may be confused by the layout of Maya and you haven't seen my previous tutorials. A, I highly recommend that you take a look at those videos. Um, you can find the links below. We textured grapes using uh, AI standard surface, subsurface scattering, and also AI jitter. And we also textured this wine glass with the wine or grape juice in another tutorial as well. So make sure you take a look at that if you're trying to figure out how to make this scene. And also just as a plus, you can download this 3D models for free at academicphoenixplus.com. So don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can download this. You can also download other models. Um, there's eBooks, more training, and so much more. So if you have time, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Let's go ahead and take a look at our environment. So I am using my workspace called texturing, which you can create your own workspace where my render window is up here at the top. I have my Maya scene here. It's already ready to go, so I can make it as small as I want since I'll be focusing on texturing. And over here to the left, we have my hypershade. Now the hypershade is, you'll notice that a lot of things are closed because I'm really gonna just focus on what's happening here. And as you can see, everything is here. We have the sky dome, we have the grape shader, we have a lot of things going on I really can't work with this so that's why you create this little space this little plus sign and now I have untitled 2 which I'm gonna label my plaid shader so now that I have that you'll notice that it says press tab I'm gonna hit tab and bring up what I need which is my AI standard surface and press enter I can middle mouse and drag this into your model or you can always right click and assign an existing material and you can find your shader I'm gonna double click on this and call this my bla my plaid shader. Let's open up the attributes by doing control A and let's focus on uh, decreasing the roughness because this should be pretty rough. So when I press play, it renders the whole thing and I just wanna focus on this particular area, which is the cloth. So if I select this white circle, what it means is that it will only render the object I have selected or the shader that I have selected, which is going to be the plaid. So everything else, grows dark and it only renders the material, which is exactly what I want. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create my base color. So under color, I'm gonna click on this little checker and I am going to choose ramp. So you can either type it up here or you can just find it. But uh, be careful, there is an Arnold ramp, but I'm gonna be using the traditional Maya ramp. So go ahead and select that. And you'll notice that it automatically connects the ramp with a placement node. So I'm gonna set uh, select my ramp and I'm going to bring these guys a little closer together and under interpolation I'm going to change this to none. So what that does and you can already see it in the preview is that it will just make a perfect straight line. So instead of having a gradient transition between the two colors it's just a perfect line. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 0.5. This is the white color and the position is now exactly at half and then I'm going to choose a color. I've already chosen colors uh, before when I was practicing this demonstration, but uh, take a look at reference of plaid or, um, and then you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. So I'm gonna choose something like a dark uh, blue, and then uh, just for fun, I'm gonna choose maybe a, uh, a light yellow. And if I, again, make sure you have plaid shader select enough, if I press play, you can see that it renders the material. All right, so I'm gonna actually go back because I'm gonna need more. This is gonna be my blue my blue yellow plaid shader and I'm happy with the way it looks. So the next thing is is that we need to create what's called an AI mix shader. I'm going to hit tab and choose AI mix and you can see that I found my AI mix shader and a mix shader has two nodes. It has shader one and shader two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out color of my my blue and yellow plaid and drag it into the shader one. The next thing I need to do is make sure that the AI mix shader is in fact connecting to this geometry. So again, you can do it the any way. You can middle mouse and drag it onto here, or you can right click, go to assign existing material, and then choose your AI mix shader. I'm gonna call this my plaid AI mix shader. 
All right. Now we need a, sh a second shader and I can quickly rebuild one. But if I click on this node and then go to edit, duplicate and say shading network, it will automatically create another one for me with all the attached nodes. So that's perfect for me. Um, this one though, I'm changing the color. So select a ramp and instead of yellow, I'm going to choose maybe a green and then I'm going to choose a red. Going to grab the out color and then connect it to shader two. What's happening is that it's going to mix weight of 50%. So that means that shader one and shader two is going to mix together based on 50%. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look. And there you go. So you can see that I have this mix of kind of like green, yellow with a bluish red, which is not what we want, but at least it's starting to work together. Okay, so let's take a look again at the ramp. And let's take a look at the, the one I just created, which is the red and green. So let me type that in, red, green. And if I go to the placement node, the placement node is very valuable because you can repeat tech UVs several times. So for example, if I take this and I say 10 by 10, now take a look at the preview, you'll notice that now it's created a bunch of lines. So again, if I press play, you'll see the effect that it has. However, I want to rotate it. So I'm going to grab my placement node again, and I'm going to change and I'm going to rotate my UVs by 90 degrees. Again, I'm going to press play and see what that looks like. Now notice that it's black and the reason is because I have the placement selected. What I need to do is go into the select the plaid AI mix shader and then you and you can see the results. Perfect. So now the lines are going in a different way. All right, I'm going to go back into this shader, which is the blue and yellow, select my placement one and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say 10 by 10. So now I'm going to take a look at the shader, what it looks like. So select your blue and yellow, press play, and you can see that the lines are going uh, left to right and it's also repeating. So that's perfect. Well, let's select the plaid AI mix shader, two shaders. One is rotating one direction and another one is rotating a different, uh, another direction. And therefore with the mode, which is blend in the AI mix, you can get this really nice result. So let's take a look at add and you notice how the textures actually add instead of blend. So it's up to you which way you want to work. I'm happy with blend, so I'm going to leave it at that. Now that we've basically finished the plaid texture, we can always uh, remove the isolate select and we can see the whole thing being rendered. Now, as you can see, it's going to render a little bit longer because there is transmission. There's two transmissions right here, just on the glass and the liquid alone. You have subsurface, so it takes a little while to render this, but you know, that's uh, when you start doing complicated things, uh, render times will take longer. Um, it's not that long, it's 34 seconds, but um, but you know, we have two things tra uh, transmitting. So we have transmission of glass, transmission of liquid, and they're both interacting with each other, plus an HDR lighting. And then you have the grapes that have subsurface and AI jitter. So we're talking about relatively complicated calculations. So it will take longer. It's cooler and it looks awesome, but it does take longer to render. So just keep, just be aware of that. All right, let's add a little bit of bump map into our object. So I'm going to press stop. What I'm going to do is uh, scroll down and go into my geometry and use the bump map. I'm going to click on this little checker and I'm going to type in cloth and you're going to notice that we, that Maya does provide a cloth shader. The bump map is right here. My bump depth is set up one. So that's hundred percent bump value is here. So I'm going to click on this little output or you can always grab it here. And I'm going to keep it as is, but the important part is the placement node. So grab that placement node. And right now it's just four by four. Let's increase it by 10 by 10 and see what that looks like. So again, I'm going to do an isolate select. I'm going to select the cloth and then we can press play and see what that looks like. I'm going to select the ramp that I'm selecting and you can see just barely that the texture is there, but it's really big and uh, we need to make sure that we can see it. So I'm going to go back into my placement node and let's go ahead and go a little crazy here. Let's go 50 by 50. Again, I'm selecting this one just because the bump mode is connected to it, but still looks really, really rough. So let's go ahead, go back into the placement node. Let's increase it to 150 by 150 in the repeat UVs. So this is 150 by 150 and you can see that it's working. Um, 
I can see the texture. Maybe it's a little too much. So again, you can just kind of, it turns yellow because I have a placement selected, but we can decrease this to 100 by 100. Select your shader and we can see the results. I also feel that it's a still a little shiny. So I'm going to go in and increase the roughness. I'm going to decrease my IOR. So this is what it looks like. And let's take a look at it all together. So even with the AI mix shader, and let me zoom in, you can see that the texture is coming through. Now it's a little big, it almost looks like canvas. So what I'm gonna do is go to the, the bump value, which doesn't render, and decrease this bump depth. Let's see what that looks like. So what I'm looking for is that I do wanna see that cloth texture, but I also don't want to see it too much. It should be a subtle look. So now that I have this, the fun part is that I actually want to connect the same cloth or the same texture to my red green plaid. So you can tell that the yellow one is actually showing the texture, but the other ones are flat. So I need to be able to change that. So what I'm going to do next is um, grab this bump value and drag it to the normal camera. That's going to tell the sh this shader that it should work as well. So I'm going to select my green shader, red green shader plaid. And you'll notice that the bump map also works on it as well. So that means that both shaders are now working with the same bump, which is great. So that means that I don't have to have two bump values that I have to worry about. I only have one now, which is very convenient. And let's see what that looks like. There we go. Let's see what the whole thing looks like. All right, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out so we can see it in all its glory. Hit one, one. I am going to increase my render settings so that it renders nicer. So I have diffuse, I have specular, I definitely have transmission, I have subsurface. I'm going to increase my transmission value here. I'm going to turn on and enable adapting just to make sure that it's active. Notice that it's a nine. I'm going to keep it at HD 540, otherwise it'll take a long time to render. All right, and that is how you can create procedural textures uh, to create plaid. So hopefully you found that helpful. We covered a quite amount, especially a lot of quality time with the placement node. And as you can see, uh, by providing what Maya has, you can create some really powerful texture. So everything in this scene, other than the HDRI dome in the back is procedurally driven. So what that means is that I can actually export these shaders and bring it in into any file and it will work automatically, which is very powerful. You do not have to have anything, any textures attached to it. You just need to have the Maya shader. And that is fantastic. So let me know if you guys have any questions by leaving a comment below. Um, or also if you have any suggestions for future videos, I'm all ears. So feel free to leave a, that comment as well below. When you get a chance, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find this 3D model so you can follow along and also other free models plus eBooks and other resources. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. And of course, I would greatly appreciate a like and a share and a subscribe. Don't forget to click on that little bell so you don't miss any of my tutorials. So please thank you again for spending time with me and I will see you next time.